All right, this was sent into the channel for a review. Uh, I reviewed one of their power supplies before. This is the Matrix Company. Uh, they have quite a few interesting instruments. Um, you might want to check out their website. They have some like LCR meters and stuff that look really cool. And they have some real nice uh, DC loads that look really cool. Anyway, this one is a triple power supply. This is the MPS 3033X. So we have zero to 30 volts, three amps on two channels and zero to six volts, three amps on one channel. So they're all three amp channels, zero to 30, zero to 30 and zero to six. Okay. And um, it has uh, a nice display that I'll show you, uh, but let's just take a look at it. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is all three supplies have floating grounds. So you can configure them in any way. You can parallel them, you can series them, you can invert one uh, plus or minus. So yeah, I really, really like that. Um, I think maybe a big selling point, this is not a cheap power supply. So uh, one of the selling points of it is it's, it's uh, programmable. Okay, so it has a, uh, let me lower the camera here a bit. Uh, it has a USB connector and RS-232 connector. Um, and then it has outputs on the back. It has channel one, channel two, channel three on the back, and sense one, sense two, sense three on the back. Uh, and uh, they're all jumpered up right now. But So that's nice. If you want to make this uh, a rack type equipment, you can bring all your outputs out the back, and you can program it from the back. Um, so that looks really good. It's got a fan. Uh, fan's a little noisy. Um, power supply. Okay, so let's uh, find a power cord here. All right, it is a vacuum fluorescent display. So I really, really like vacuum fluorescent displays. They're very, very easy to read. We have uh, volts, amps, volts, amps, volts, amps. So that's very nice. Um, and we have a voltage set button. We have a current set button. Um, and we can set maybe the current to say one. Now it's one amp. So now we have one amp everywhere. Um, set the voltage, uh, V set to say 15.23. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, pretty accurate uh, out to uh, millivolts. So, so that is nice. All right. Um, so let me first discuss the one negative, uh, one of the negatives, uh, and that is that the uh, input connectors are not standard spacing. You cannot plug on a dual banana jack. That's just a shame. I, they just need to move it just a fraction of an inch. So, um, yeah, that's just a shame. They really should have, uh, they should have really gone in both ways too. Um, it just, it would have been super easy to do. So anyway, that's a big fail on their part. Uh, definitely would have changed that. All right. Um, okay. Let's see here. Let's hook up a, uh, let's hook up a load because I wanted to show you one other thing. All right, I hooked up a, a, a big resistor to the uh, uh, to the output here, so let's turn it on. And so it's crowbarring here at one amp. Uh, so let's increase the current uh, of of channel one, uh, three amps, and it is crowbarring at fifteen. Okay, so then let's set the voltage set to thirty. And yeah, there we go. So uh, we have three amps coming out and um, it's crowbarring at 14, right? So let's go to the uh, knob here. Now the knob is not telling you, it's not starting from where it is. When you press the knob in, it should start from where it is, okay? And uh, we have to we have to lower it down like this. So let's say we have it set to Let's see, we have it set to 12 volts. It's not monitoring the current real time. And that's just a big fail on my part too. So yeah, so a couple things, and this is just software. So if they're listening, um, really uh, whenever you're adjusting uh, the uh, knob here, th the current should be live. So you can watch what's happening because a lot of times you want to know what's what's happening in the circuit, and it's not until you hit enter is 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 when it changes. And the same for current. If I do a if I do an I set, 
again, it doesn't start from where it is. It should always start from where it is. Uh, so these are just these are just software things that they can do. So uh, and you have to hit enter. Yeah, um, could be better. Could could be much much better. And that's just that's just software. Now, I think this instrument was just made to be a programmable uh, rack instrument. Um, and they didn't pay a lot of attention to the front panel, but that's a super shame because I think it would make a, a really, really nice bench supply. Change the connector uh, spacing, uh, change the menu so it's live all the time. Um, yeah, that would be, that would be great. Uh, you can do, uh, you can do, uh, hit this but button that changes which channel you're talking to. Channel one, channel two, channel three, there's a little arrow that tells you that. So that, that that's okay. Um, and uh, I like this layout better than the Rigel. Uh, the Rigel has that weird round uh, keypad. I'm not a big fan of that. I like a rectangular keyboard. Uh, so that's good. It does have uh, memory. It has uh, save and recall and stuff. Uh, it does have a meter. Uh, so you can be look at what it's set to and what it's reading. All right. So you can say, oh, maybe that's when you were adjusting the thing. The meter wasn't set correctly. So uh, let's say that we, again, it's starting not at where it is, but where, so if I hit meter, it doesn't do anything. So that, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't fix it. It's always just in where you want to go, not to where, to where, where you are. Um, and then it has the timeout thing too, which I'm not a big fan of either. It times out, puts you back. Um, I like to, if I'm told it, I'm gonna be using the knob, then let me use the knob. Don't change it, okay, until I do something. Um, so, yeah, it's all software. It's just a matter of a little bit of software. This would be a really great instrument. Um, it is nice, though. I mean, it's a heavy-duty power supply. Uh, 0 to 30, like I said, 3 amps, so that's 66... I can't do the math. 600 watts, yeah. So, um... It is very, very heavy. This is this thing is surprisingly heavy. Um, so I think we should maybe do a couple things. Let's see if we can program it. Um, I did ask them for a programming manual, which they sent me. It didn't come with the instrument, but I asked for it, and uh, they they gave me. Now it's basically Scuppy or Skippy, whichever way whichever way you like to pronounce it. Skippy programming. Uh, which was kind of invented by probably HP, I don't know, whoever did it. Uh, one of those companies, National, or somebody had the S SCPI programming language. And it's, it's text-based, so you can say volts and number and, you know, channel. And it's all, it's all English, English type of thing. So, yeah, let's hook up this up to my little laptop here and see if we can't program it. All right, let's see if we can program this thing. Um... It came with uh, some paperwork. It did come with a user's manual and a, and a, uh, a proof of calibration of all of the places where they cal uh, checked it for calibration and uh, a QA stamp and stuff. So they did, their, they did their due diligence there. But it didn't have um, any programming. And so I asked them for if they had any other document. And they gave me a, a, a Skippy manual for all of the uh, commands. So it is programmable. Uh, over RS232 USB, and it uh, has all Skippy commands. So it's pretty well compatible with m with most Skippy programs for power supplies. Um, so uh, have it turned on. I'm going to be using one of these little RS232 dongles. They're real cheap. Uh, RS232 to to to, uh, to USB, and uh, we will uh, see here. Turn on my computer. Um, all right, let's move this thing around. All right, I need to open uh, Python. Uh, I'm using PyCharm for the environment. Um, and I have a program here. So I think what I'll do is I'll rearrange the camera so you can see the program first and then we'll, and then we'll watch it operate. Yeah, I'm not sure how great of a video this is gonna be, but anyway, uh, there is a, a library you have to load, which is PY Serial. Uh, and I've loaded that in. So you say import serial, and then you can set the serial port. Say serial is COM4 9600, and you can set all the all the stop bits and stuff. And then I'm going to issue the command star IDN question mark character turn line feed. Um, I have the a machine set up for that. 
Um, and then we're going to send it, uh, we're going to read from it, see if it identifies itself. The next thing I want to do is send it a command, which was system temperature question mark. So it has a, a, a way of measuring its own internal temperature and we will execute that. And then at the very end, I will say uh, volt question mark. I'll ask it for whatever channel it's defaulting to channel one. Um, you know, tell me what the, what the volts are. And uh, then at the end, I'm going to write, uh, this is kind of a shorthand skippy, which is channel two, 3.456.120, uh, which is set channel two to 3.456 volts, 0.12 amps, and leave the output on. If that was a one, then the output would come on and then do a serial close. So anyway, that is the program. Uh, so let's go ahead and execute it here so you can watch it run. Um, and uh, it's coming back with uh, matrix comma MPS dash 3033X, a version 2.0, 1.6. It says that it's 26 degrees centigrade and it's 5.0000 volts. All right, so let's watch that on the front panel of the power supply when I execute it. Uh, so if I'm in local mode, this little uh, special character disappears. When I run the program, uh, the remote light comes on, so that tells you you're, you're, you're in remote mode, and it read the 12 volts back, and it read, uh, oh, it read 5 volts back. Oh, the, the uh, current channel is 5, okay? And so it read this 5 volts. This little, uh, if I do the, this, yeah, you can see which channel is active. So channel three was active at the time. So that's when it did a volt question mark. It came back with that five. I told it explicitly on channel two set 3.456 volts. So I did that. And I told it to set 0.12 amps and it, it, it did that. So it is programming just fine. Uh, looks great. Okay, look, let's look inside this beast. Did I mention it's heavy? It's at least 20 pounds at least. <laughs> so what weighs so much? Well, oh, that thing there, it's a, it's a linear power supply. So it's got this giant, giant transformer. This thing is a big bruiser. <laughs> it is big and thick. It consumes basically at least a third of the entire volume. It's just a big giant thing. So that's, that's what you get. That's what you're paying all your money for. I think this thing's about $400, so it's not cheap. Um, so the basic construction of this, uh, Let's zoom back out here. The basic construction is that we have a big transformer and big heat sink. <laughs> okay, those are the two big things. So this is a big uh, push-pull. There's a fan on the input and the output. So uh, it's uh, blowing, uh, blowing air through a tunnel here. And it has components on both sides. So keeps those all cool. Here's our bottom side. I don't know if I showed that before, but there's the, uh, there's the back side. Um, this card on the top is the uh, uh, interface for the RS-232 and, uh, and USB, and it has uh, uh, sections for those two here uh, that are separate, and then uh, they are optocouple isolated from, uh, from the rest of the uh, circuit. So that looks like it's a really, really nice design. Um, but if we look underneath here, I've already taken the screws out so we can look underneath here, but underneath it's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom back down. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see. There's just too many wires in this thing. A whole bunch of relays down in there. There's at least uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven relays. Um, so the way that analog uh, power supplies work is that you don't want to be dropping too much voltage. So you'll only engage the windings of the transformer that you need. So there may, may be one winding that goes between zero and five volts, one goes five to 10, one, you know, something like that. And you, you choose which winding is best. So you don't have to drop a whole bunch of voltage and get hot. Uh, so that's, that's the way that thing works. Lots of uh, this uh, red uh, stuff to keep connectors and capacitors and stuff from falling off. So everything is, uh, is glued down. So it looks very, very rugged. Um, down over here, let's see if I can put this around here. Can I use, can I use this? No, it's, this thing's kind of slippery. Um, 
I think you can just start to see one. There's, well, let me move your camera. Yeah, here are the big sh shunts. It's a three, three amps on all channels. So there's three shunts here to measure the current uh, on the thing. Uh, there's a nice attention to detail up here. Uh, this is where the output connectors are. And there's a board here that has a whole bunch of low frequency and high frequency capacitors. Uh, so there's filtering right at the connector, which is nice. I, I like to see that. Um, so that's, that's there. All of the uh, microprocessor and smarts and stuff are up on the front panel board, of course. Um, yeah. Give you a little closer look at this board here. Yeah, like I say, it's that big, giant toy ride right there. Okay, well, that was my review of the MPS3033X. Um, my overall impression is that it probably makes for a good system power supply where it's going to be controlled with software and things like that. Um, as far as a benchtop supply, I think it's going to be a little more difficult to use. Uh, a little bit more like a set and forget um, because a lot of the uh, values aren't live when you're when you're actually uh, changing them. Um, I think a lot of those things could be changed in a software uh, update, so maybe they'll they'll do that someday. But uh, anyway, there we go. That's my review.